What is up you guys? It is Zach and welcome back to my channel today. I've got a very special human with me. Introduce yourself. Um, I'm somebody. Named? Um, 25. It's Ryder's DX. Y'all know Ryder's DX at this point. Um, and today, we're sitting down. Well, first of all, we actually also did a video for his channel. Yes. So go and check it out. I'll leave a link. Oh, I forgot to tell people to go check out your video. <laughs> Unforgivable. But there'll be a link in the cards somewhere yeah, up here for cool. you to go and do that, uh, where we talk about license games. But today, we're talking a little more stuff than nintendo we for, for my folks. We're talking about the Jolly Red Plumber Mario. That's like a yellow sponge, right? Yes, the yellow is fun, <laughs> which actually is kind of funny. I'm thinking about two of my games don't even feature Mario. It doesn't matter, though. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about our top three favorite Mario games. Now, y'all probably know mine, so mine will be a bit redundant, but you'll get to hear Ryder's thoughts. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Anything you want to add before we get started? Mario's a red plumber. Mario is a red plumber. So I guess I'll, I'll, guess I'll start off with the obvious one. <laughs> Um, I like Mario Pinball in no. Uh, Luigi's Mansion. I mean, it's it's it, it's like it, it's my favorite game. It's my favorite game of all time. It's it's a classic capturing ghosts. It's fun. I, I love it. Spooky Luigi creeping out of mansion. I mean, if you're on this channel, you know what Luigi's Mansion is. Yeah. Um, but I will say that Riders <laughs> tried it out for the first time. It's for the very first time. <laughs> so I do want to get your quick was, thoughts on that. It wasn't really my choice. But um, I mean, I was. Going I didn't. To, it was not me that forced him. I did not do. I yeah. have no input on that. But like, yeah, it was. Um, but I was. I was happy to oblige. You know. So um, yeah. So that's a fun thing about like so we have Paxis in case you all have been. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Pax. <laughs> yeah. But um, one of the things that Paxis has is that they have all these different like free consoles, and you can go ahead. Well, you can't take them. They're not free in that sense. But like you can. <laughs> <laughs> but you can like go into the rooms and like play a bunch of different games with like, all these different consoles and of course GameCube is one of them and um, yeah I was basically heavily heavily encouraged to um, play Luigi's Mansion and so I played like up to like the first boss the baby boss which was pretty epic I gotta say I think it was a nice little twist that like um, the parents were just like these like parents and then the baby was like this nasty monster you know so that was really cool and I, I gotta say I don't think I've ever played a game like it before like it's, I can't think of a game that that's like, honestly. And so it was um, interesting experience. The catching the ghost thing was a little, something I had to get used to in the beginning, but as soon as I got it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm a ghost hunter now, you know, no problem. But no, I actually thought it was a really fun game and I'm looking forward to playing it again. Um, got a huge backlog, <laughs> it'll happen eventually. But no, it was a very solid game. I can definitely see its appeal and I could definitely equate it to like one of my what my favorite Mario game is actually because it kind of pushes the boundaries of Mario a little bit, you know. Definitely a lot more spookier, a lot more like zany than like you would expect a typical Mario game. I think the fact that it's a Luigi game kind of gives it the space to like be a little bit more different and creative. But huh, I enjoyed it. It was really good. Yeah. I also found out where the professor's from because I was introduced to that character in like Mario Party. Like, I don't know what Mario Party it was. That would have been six. Okay, yeah, it was six. That's the one I owned. So I was introduced to him. I was like, oh, this is a cool character. I wonder where he's from. The Luigi's yeah. Mansion. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with my top three um, Mario games, and this will be my third place game. Um, this list changes, by the way, like every year. So. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no I get that. No guarantee this will stay the same. But this was a really tight race between two very good games. But I've got to say, in third place is the original Super Mario Galaxy. So this was actually the first Mario 3D platformer that I fell in love with, actually. So I got the Nintendo Wii after getting straight A's in middle school. So I was quite proud of that. And one of the first games my dad brought for me was, of course, Super Mario Galaxy. And then I played it, and I was just like, Wow, I've never played anything like this before. Um, I did play Mario Sunshine before Galaxy, and I despised it. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's there you go. I'll let uh, you, I'll just let you have that opinion. Sure, yeah. Yeah, but I played Galaxy, and I was like, okay, this is why Mario is so big. This is why he's so great. Like this is just such a amazing like first of all gorgeous 3d platformer like i love traveling to all the different galaxies and go to all these different planets and they all had their own little gimmicks and stuff and it really just showed me like just how like amazing mario could be as a franchise and it really was like i think one of the key games that really made me become like a permanent mario fan and so before then i was like a hardcore sonic enthusiast 
I can only play Sonic. I only love Sonic. Mario can go, you know, whatever. Um, and so Mario Galaxy was one of those games that really helped me soften up a little bit as a Sonic fan. And I was like, wow, it's just amazing. I love the music, especially. Uh, Rosalina's amazing. Um, all the different worlds, the way that Mario controls. I didn't even mind the motion controls that much. I think they were perfectly fine and not intrusive. And it was really between that game and Galaxy 2. I think it's really tough to choose between those two games, but I think there's just something about Galaxy. I think I, think I give it to Galaxy because I like the tough world slightly more than Galaxy 2. But otherwise, both games are pretty much flawless. Flawless adventures. Yeah, what I love about Galaxy, like, especially for the time, is, you know, obviously 64 and Sunshine were great, even if you don't think Sunshine was great. I think with Galaxy, though, Galaxy added scope to things. Yeah. Like, it added, like, there, it was so much bigger than just something happening at Peach's Castle or something happening something happening on Isle Delfino. There's this galaxy-wide, multiple galaxies of just things happening, and you're traveling between galaxies and planets. It just feels huge and it just feels like like yes this is big this is a big adventure for mario whereas in, in 64 oh mario's just jumping into paintings and exploring yeah. small little worlds here it's like boom thinking about it now that's actually a theme of my entire top three it's like they're all big adventures and i love that i love when mario's able to like kind of just take up all the space like in the adventure you know and galaxy definitely took up every single like space that it could it could so my next one, another kind of obvious one, but Mario, as well known as he is for his single player experiences like Mario Galaxy and Luigi's Mansion, yeah. also very well known for his multiplayer experiences and playing with friends and you know playing as any character in the Mario franchise. Well, everyone knows how much I love the Mario Party series. Of course. Of course. And <laughs> my favorite game, as many of you know, is Mario Party 6. Mario Party 6, out of all the Mario Parties, I feel like it has the most strategy with the orbs um, and the boards are just so well designed. I love how each one is different and di just differently themed. There's different things to do on each board. It's not just, oh, get the star and see where it moves. Each board has something different, like Snowflake Lake, you use the chain shops to steal stars. Um, on Castaway Bay, it's a linear board, and like it rotates between DK and Bowser. There's a lot of that, plus the strategy, plus the strong minigame lineup. I think it's a really solid Mario Party game. And even if it's not your favorite, I do think it is strong to acknowledge how great this one is in terms of like Mario Party was getting stale by that point yeah. and then six introduced the microphone and just things to make it a bit different than what four and five did so yeah and I know you said you have Mario Party six I so have it. I want because I know it's not your favorite Mario Party but I want to know if you have any memories with it I'll be honest I think a lot I think a big part about like what Mario Party like depends on which one like really hits you at the right moment and um, I think six is very really solid. I remember playing my brother, and we all we both thought it was great. You know, not much else to do to it. Um, I got like Mario Party Eight was actually my first Mario Party, and that was like the first game I was like, oh, I actually think I kind of like party games. You know, and so and I don't know, I didn't mind the motion controls at all in that personally. So it was um, it was definitely a really cool experience, and I was like, okay, I like Mario Party. So I was like kind of surprised to see how many people hated it when I went online and stuff. Yeah, um, well, most people use, actually, 8 is one of the more popular ones. It just, it's one of those things where it's just like, because of the motion controls, a lot of people do tend to hate on it. And, like, yeah. there are, like, people it who... It just also came out, like, when the Wii was, like, really blowing up. Here. Yeah. So it was, like, it was one of those first games that, like, really helped to take control of the, take advantage of, like, the motion controls and kind of show people what you can do with it. Um, even if it was, like, I believe the game was being made at the GameCube first. Yeah, know? yeah. And then the motion controls were kind of just thrown in, like, afterwards. But I thought it was pretty solid. But no, yeah, six is good. I um, I don't really remember what, anything else about it. <laughs> All good. <laughs> so I'm definitely um, gonna be a little predictable with this one, but I think it's really like difficult to argue against it otherwise. Um, so right after Galaxy, like my second place game would probably be Super Mario Odyssey, and I'm like, well, of course, 
every 3D Mario game just gets progressively better and better, you know? But it really is the case here, I feel like, because Odyssey, like, kind of just takes everything that Galaxy did. So everything you love about Galaxy is also in Odyssey. Like, you even travel to different planets and stuff. So it still has, like, that similar concept. It's like, oh, I guess we're kind of doing this again, which is fine. But I think Cappy was, like, such a great and unique, like, mechanic to put in there. And... You know, they really take full advantage of it because they really just use that as like a vessel to allow Mario to do all these crazy unique things. And you just really never know what Cappy's gonna allow you to do. And I just feel like in a way you get to play like as 10,000 different characters in Mario Odyssey because whenever you have a new ability, it's like playing as someone else other than Mario. And I just think that it took everything Galaxy did and just made it more open. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Well, Odyssey is great. It is fantastic. And I think, like, I also love seeing Bowser in a suit. <laughs> he does look pretty dapper in it, I'm not gonna yeah, lie, the top you know, hat. All you're missing is just his rendition of Peaches. <laughs> I was gonna say, is Bowser, though, like, if you, want, if you want to be with a woman, talk to her. Don't just take her and fly her away. Well, you can't talk. He, he, in the games, right? Like, he doesn't. Well, I guess he doesn't. He doesn't sunshine. Talk. Well, sunshine is doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> sunshine is an anomaly. <laughs> it needs to be turned back to whatever planet it came from. Well, like, Bowser has dialogue boxes in like Galaxy and pretty. Yeah, sorry. it does. Yeah, so he talks. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think Mario doesn't talk either. Yeah, but like Mario doesn't need to say anything. <laughs> he, <laughs> He's got that he literally riz. Doesn't, he literally doesn't not have to. <laughs> I mean, look at how far it's taken him. <laughs> but See, no, I think yeah, I think Odyssey is very solid game and just improves upon Galaxy in pretty much every way. I don't mean, what else can you say? I mean, I got my thoughts on Odyssey, but I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> oh my God. You don't like Odyssey? It's not that I don't like it. It's not that I don't like it. I just think, personally, I think it's a tad overrated. Okay, I can kind of get that. It's literally rated 10 out of 10. Not like yeah. Everywhere. Like, I mean, I think for me, the old, like, because it is great. I love the aspect of transforming, or basically transforming into characters using their abilities and it, it it varies up the gameplay and is great for puzzle solving. I think the one thing for me was the moons I didn't care for. I think there's a lot of moons, so that's kind of like a you either love it or hate it kind of thing. Yeah, or it's like I, I got all of like the base level moons, and I felt no incentive to get the rest of them. It's, and because of that, the game ended up being really short for me. Yeah, it's kind of like they really tried to like entice you with all the different moons. You know, I feel like it's just a result of like this generation. You know, it's like constantly needing like tons of, like different like. I don't know what the word is, but it's like... Um, simulation? Or? Yeah, simulation or like rewarding. Yeah. Like you, every single thing you do needs to be rewarded. And I think like a lot of like mobile games in particular really fall into this category. And I think Odyssey kind of tried to take a little bit of that. And I'm like, I don't really need that personally. I would have been fine with just like the, you know, four stars of like each world kind of like format. But I mean, like there's something different and you still kind of get the same experience overall. It's just presented in a slightly different way. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, no, Odyssey is great. I don't know why there's not a second one, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully it means that whatever they got coming up next is going to be even bigger. Oh, I'm scared. All right, so my final game is going to be a another non-Mario game. <laughs> I feel like I'm like the bigger Mario fan. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, you see, I'm a fan <laughs> of a lot of the side games. All the, the I mean, I, I like the main line, but they're never my favorite. I always like the kind of weird, yeah. quirky side games, and that includes this one. Um, everyone knows our, um, our anti-Mario Wario, and uh, he wears a lot of clothes. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but WarioWare is a beloved series. A lot of people love it. A lot of people are tired of it and miss Wario Land, but that's a whole other conversation. But a lot of people debate on which WarioWare is the best. A lot of people say Smooth Moves from the Wii. Yeah. I don't hold that opinion <laughs> just because I don't care for motion controls. So my favorite WarioWare game is WarioWare Mega Micro Games, or Mega, no, Mega Party Games for the Nintendo GameCube. This one is just a classic. It's the first home console WarioWare game. It has so many great micro games that were brought over from the Game Boy Advance and includes all these really freaking fun multiplayer modes. I mean, granted, for something like an outsider who has no clue about anything about WarioWare, you would look at these mini games and go, these are freaking weird. Like you would be so weirded out. There's a, there's a mini game that um, basically you're in a dojo and um, you play mini games and 
obviously only one person wins and then everyone else um will have a turtle and you have to bounce on your turtle without falling and then obviously the more you lose the more turtles you get oh uh, okay and then there's like a one where you have to listen to a doctor and follow his orders while you're playing the it's weird yeah. But I love it for its weirdness and just the multiplayer mayhem you get out of it. Mario Party is great from a competitive aspect. You know, you're, you're really getting into it. You're getting heated. You're stealing stars. WarioWare is competitive, but it's the kind where you'll be laughing your butt off competitive. And it's just one of those ones where it's like, if you understand the mechanics of WarioWare and you play it with other people who do, you're going to have a great time. And I, I can't recommend it enough. I do have it for the Wii. Um, the smooth moves one. So that was like one of my first Wii games. And I enjoyed the motion controls, but that was like my first WarioWare game in general. So I was like, what is this? Yeah, so you, um, do, you know the weird, the weirdness of it. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. It was fun. You know, I'll be honest though, I don't play it a lot. You know, I, I play for like maybe like an hour or something, like I'm good for a while. So it is that kind of game though. It's like a very fast paced Yeah, yeah, it's game. a very pick up and play, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's it's unique and you know, that's something that you gotta give to a lot of these like Mario sub franchises that they all have their own unique quirks and stuff. And it's really cool to see them experiment in that way. And I mean, yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Um, I actually didn't realize WarioWare and Wario Land were two different things. They are two different Until things. <laughs> Wario Land is a 2D platform where WarioWare is the party game, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea about that. <laughs> so, like, I really am not the bigger Mario fan. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to make that claim. Yeah, that, that's not who I'm willing but to That's a bold claim from a uh, Sonic fan. Yes. I'll tell you anything about Sonic, you know. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think Sonic has anything comparable to WarioWare, though. That's definitely not something no. we have. SpongeBob does, though. Oh, yes, he does. That's Squiggle the, Pants. Squiggle Pants. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that one, too. That was good. That was yeah. good. I mean, yeah, I think it's SpongeBob. So it could be the worst game in the world, but still SpongeBob. So it's fine. Except Robot Revenge or Hero Pants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, those are the only, only exceptions. My favorite Mario game by a landslide. So if, like, Galaxy and Odyssey are here, then the Thousand Year Door is all the way up here times 10,000. <coughs> oh, the Thousand Year Door. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The thousand you year spoiled door. it. Yeah, I mean, like, spoiled it by, like, five seconds. I, <laughs> I love it. The Thousand Year Door. Mwah. Chef's Kiss. Amazing. Perfect. Never been done before. Will never be done again Mario game. Like, what were they doing when they made this game? Intelligent systems are truly the most intelligent people in the world, I gotta say. And they got a system going. <laughs> yeah. But, oh my god, the thousand year door. Like, so, the first Paper Mario game I played was the original Paper Mario. I played it on the virtual console, actually. And that was actually the first RPG game I've ever gotten into. And I was like... That was also, like, I know I said Galaxy was kind of like the Mario game that, like, really softened me up, but I think Paper Mario was really, like, the game that, like, made me go, okay, I'm a Mario fan. I really like this series. We gotta keep playing more Mario games. And so, I played Paper Mario, like, 100% of it. No, not 100% of it. Oh, my God, no. Um, finished it, and it was, like, an amazing experience. I had to have more of it right away. So, I got the Thousand Year Door for the GameCube shortly afterwards. And let me tell you... It is literally the original Paper Mario, but just like better in every single way possible. Like better graphics, more zany and wacky characters, more like overdeveloped and like interesting worlds and such. And just like so much more charm, so much more humor in particular. And it's a game that I like to say is actually very full of itself because it literally is a game where it has an audience cheering it on. So it, it, it makes its own audience cheer on its own gameplay. And I just think that like, that's a sign of a game that's not only like confident in itself but just knows that it's the shit so i don't know man the thousand year door like i can replay that game like over and over again i just love the way that it expands mario universe in a way that i just have never seen like most other mario games do i mean not even like i talked about how like odyssey and galaxy really expanded mario in like a gameplay setting but i feel like the thousand year door not only does that but it also does it in like a narrative setting so you have all these different characters that honestly i wish some of these characters were in like Mario parties or like Mario sports games. Like, um, why is Gumbella not a character in Mario Party 9? <laughs> or I, I just said 9 for some reason. You said 9. That was a bold choice. That was a bold choice for Mario I Party fans. Why, I don't know why. You're going to get the heat in the comments for that one. Um, but no, I need to see Vivian come back. I need to see like um, the computer that falls in love with Princess Peach come yeah. back. Um, bomb, was it bomb? What was the, the bomb? The, the oh, Captain. Captain Bobbery? Yeah. Something like that. Oh my god, I'm going to hate myself when I look back and realize that's wrong. 
Um, but, I mean, I have the excuse of not playing this game for a few years, so. <laughs> but, like, his storyline, though, oh my god, so heartbreaking, so, like, sweet, and just, like, everything about this game is literally the most perfect thing in the world, and I'm just, like, game of the century, game of a lifetime, like, no other game like it. As soon as it comes out on the Switch, it will be the best Switch game of all time. So, <laughs> it's just, like... Well, what can I say? And that's that's why I love it. It takes chances. It does things. The characters are more unique. Like you have Vivian, and like you have all these characters that are just a little bit more out there, and it's just more. They, it's, it's like the original Paper Mario was the the groundwork, and then Thousand Year Door built onto it and did more with it. It's yeah. what a proper sequel should be. Sure. People always say, "Oh, sequel should try something new." No, you build upon what you already have. Try new things, but build upon what you yeah. got. That's something Thousand Year Door did really good at. It's like it did basically take the format of the original Paper Mario, but it just made it like better in every single way possible. I cannot tell you how far down my jaw dropped at the end of the game. You know, I've never seen Princess Peach like that before. It was absolutely insane. And I think that's an issue of like people have with like all the Paper Mario games that came out afterwards because a lot of those games kind of just like tossed away what worked before and tried to make something new instead. Thousand Year Door took what was good from the original one and just made it better in every single way possible. So I'm excited for the remake and like I said, game of a lifetime. Uh, Alright, I think we're gonna call it there. Um, is there anything you want to plug before we uh, end off today's video? Um, no. <laughs> Check them out, link in the description. <laughs> you know the deal. I don't have, I don't have much going on right now. I just Besides the typical stuff, watch my videos, like them. It's, it's great. It's been great talking to you and like I hang out with you at the convention and stuff. And it's really great to finally do something like this in particular because it's like we collaborate many times. Yeah. But this is... It's like an in real life, in person, like yeah, this proper... Is like, this is like the real deal. <laughs> Alright, so thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining me. And um, let me know down in the comments down below what are your favorite Mario games? There's a lot of them to choose from, so I'd love to hear what you have to say. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And until next time. If someone says sunshine, then you're on my death list. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I'll see you outside right now. <laughs> Later, guys.